Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are joining us this week for online worship at Cambridge Lutheran Church. A special welcome to any first time visitors. Uh, we're glad that you have chosen to spend some time with us this week. And if you are a first time visitor or a guest, I would encourage you to reach out to the church office to let us know that you are here. Uh, you can get information about Cambridge Lutheran on our Facebook page, on our website, or by calling the church office. But again, I'm encouraging any first time visitors to please let us know that you're here so we can welcome you properly rather than having some guy welcome you here on the Google. This week we are continuing our worship uh, with the uh, sermon series, The New Abnormal, with Pastor Andy and Pastor Emily speaking on abnormal kindness. Abnormal kindness is something that we all need during this period of increased stress and uncertainty that we're all living through. And the New Abnormal series is based on the book of Ephesians. Uh, parents want to remind you that there is content for your kids in the uh, Kid Zone segment of worship. It's available now on our Facebook link and by email. And I've got a couple of kids' messages today to go along with the teachings, and we look forward to starting something new next Sunday. So I'd like to encourage you to uh, clear your mind, clear your heart, open your heart, settle back, and prepare for worship, and let's focus on the one who gives us life. Thank you.
Good morning. Uh, just a couple of things before we continue with our worship service. We will be celebrating communion later in the service. So um, if you haven't had a chance yet, um, now is a good time to go and grab your uh, communion elements. So your bread and uh, your wine or your juice, whatever that looks like for you and your family. Remember that after the worship service, you can stop by and have coffee with the pastors. Uh, the link for that uh, Zoom meeting is in the video description, whether you are on Facebook or YouTube, we would love to see you and hear from you. Uh, if you are asking what the church's plan is for reopening, I mean, I know we're all getting new information all the time. Um, the best answer that you can find at this time is actually in Andy's article in the latest e-news that came out this past Thursday. Uh, that should have been emailed to you. If you don't receive those, please let us know because we would love to add you um, to the list to make sure that you're getting those so you can stay updated with what's happening around the church. Um, so yeah, if that's one of your questions, uh, for sure check out his article because um, for what we know right now, um, that's the best laid up plan that we have. So please go and check that out. Alpha continues uh, this evening. Uh, we are on week three, so if you haven't been able to join us yet and you would like to, please let us know. Uh, you can either comment below on this video or you can um, email myself or Chuck Carsonson and we'll be happy to get you the information you need. This Alpha is completely online, so if you ever wanted to attend Alpha in your PJs, uh, now is your opportunity. <laughs> Uh, this week, we're going to do something a little different, and we're going to go ahead and actually dismiss our kids to Kids Zone now. So, uh, parents, if you have a, a second device in your house, now would be a great time to go have your kids do um, the Kids Zone activities. Those are located on our Facebook page, um, or they should have been emailed to you if that is what you have requested. Now, um, we are going to continue the worship service with the reading from today, which comes from the book of Ephesians. So this is letter uh, Paul's letter to the people who live in Ephesus. Now we're focusing today on uh, chapter four, but I'm going to be reading uh, verses throughout the chapter. So we'll start with verse one. Paul writes, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling that you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles live in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding and alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They have lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to lasciviousness, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors who we are members of one another. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you.
Good morning. Thank you for joining us. People have been asking me each week where it is that I'm going to preach. I thought I'd do something kind of radical this week and preach from church. It's actually really fun uh, to be up here, to be here. And it was two months ago uh, when Pastor Emily and I did the first remote service preaching from this very stage and how different it is now, how much has changed in those two months. And uh, if you've been wondering when we're going to reopen as a church, we did send out an email on that on Thursday, the e-news, and we invite you to check that out. And if you're not getting our e-news via email, let us know and we'd love to add you to our list. We're in a series in May called The New Abnormal. And the reason we're doing that series is that's the number one question we get. When are things going to return to normal? And what we're asking is, what is it about normal, though, that maybe we don't want to return to? Maybe we don't want to rush into embracing again. And we're also naming the fact that Christians aren't even really called to be normal or to live normal lives. Christians are actually called to be abnormal, to be in the world, but not of the world, to be salt for the world, to be light for the world. We're called to be abnormal, to have a different normal than the world does to see the world differently. And that was week one. Our message was entitled Abnormal Sight. And we heard Paul say these words, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his incom incomparably great power for us who believe the same power as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. We are to see differently. The second thing, we're to value things in the world and gifts differently. We're to value as God does. And that was week two, abnormal wealth. We don't value things like the world does. We value as God does. In Ephesians 2, it says this, God who is rich in mercy. God, who is rich in mercy, out of his great love, made us alive together, not alone, together in Christ. In verse 7, the immeasurable, the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So God is rich in mercy, God is rich in grace, and God is rich in kindness toward us. What do those riches do? They make us alive together in Christ. So that's our message today for week three, which is this abnormal kindness, the immeasurable riches of God in kindness toward us, that we are supposed to embody, that God works through us so that we might live lives of kindness toward our neighbor. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier this week, and he was describing life in quarantine, and he described it like this. He said, I'm just a lot closer to irritable. I thought that was kind of a fun way to describe it. Uh, he said, I'm always just one or two levels away from it. So uh, I went out of my way to be careful as I was talking to him. It didn't help uh, that I had been late to our meeting, and then I had tech trouble, and then my sound wasn't working, and uh, I think I was getting them a little closer and closer to the edge. Question for you today, what are, what are the buttons that people can press to put you a little closer to the edge? For him, he said it was irritability. For some people, it might be anxiety, it might be fear about any number of things, it might be anger. You see, most of the time that we're talking about this virus thing, this quarantine, we're talking about how it affects us physically. We need to take precautions. We need to wear masks. We need to do social distancing. We need to stay more than six feet apart. We need to wash your hands, don't touch your face, all the rest of it. And by the way, isn't it weird to view people that way as someone who might be a carrier? I mean, it's really unfortunate. It really doesn't help us love our neighbor. But what is it about this whole quarantine? What are the buttons? What what sort of response is it creating in you? 
And I want us to look at two things today. First, I want us to recognize for the benefit of our neighbor that there are all kinds of emotional responses that people are happening in response to this new normal. And we need to learn a new abnormal. And Paul points us to it in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 4, he says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. A few weeks ago, I quoted Henry Cloud, who said that everyone's entitled during this quarantine period to at least one tantrum. Uh, one woman emailed me asking if she was entitled to one a day, possibly, because that's what she thought she'd be needing, I'm not sure. But really, there are emotional effects, even if we're not recognizing them, for all of us. What are they for you? I mean, I know extroverts that are going crazy. I know introverts who are thinking, hey, this is kind of nice. I know a lot of people for whom life hasn't changed at all. They're working the same job at the same hours in the same way. Maybe they're not going out as much, but I said, hey, what's the big deal? I know other people who've just had it. So the second thing is just this question. Are we a prisoner of this quarantine? I mean, are, is it imprisoning us? Maybe in our own homes, but even beyond that, are we a prisoner of this? I mean, we feel like it. A couple of weeks ago, our family, or about a week or two into this, our family put together a daily schedule uh, because otherwise it was just chaos around the house. And uh, my seven-year-old took it upon himself a day or two later to rewrite the schedule. I thought it was really fun. He titled it Prison Schedule for the Day. And uh, I have it right here. I don't know that you can read that. He titled it Prison Schedule for the Day. Uh, tell us how you really feel about things. And uh, here was the schedule for the day. Item one of the day, first thing of the day, pump up. That's our exercise class at about 7.15 in the morning. Second thing was free time. Then it was followed by breakfast. Then it was followed by work. Spell W-R, okay. And that was followed by lunch and after lunch, all the rest of the day, free time. Uh, so a schedule that's heavy on food and free time does not sound all that bad to me. That's my kind of schedule. Uh, but the question is, are we prisoners of this? I mean, what was that line from Hotel California? You know, we're all just prisoners of our own device. Another book of the Bible, Paul wrote about freedom when he was a prisoner. He literally wrote about freedom when he was being held captive. So the question is whether we're in quarantine or not, are you a prisoner and whose prisoner are you? Are you experiencing freedom? And here's what Paul says. He says, if you're a prisoner of anyone or anything, be a prisoner of the Lord. Let's listen to what he says. A prisoner in the Lord, I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is, and listen to this whole list of things that he gives, there is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By the way, not two, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. So whose prisoner are you? Don't be a prisoner. Don't let quarantine confine you. Let the Lord define you. I want to leave you with an image today. A friend of mine, Dave Householder, who's preached in this space, he's preached in our church a number of times, asks this. He says, what is the slideshow in your heart doing? You know how sometimes our mind, our heart is on replay. You know, we're saying or thinking or experiencing the same things again and again. He just asks us, hey, what's on your slideshow? What's playing over and over again? And he invites us to add some slides. And here are some slides I think we need to add. Add abnormal sight. 
we need to add abnormal wealth and add abnormal kindness. And how can we experience those things with others? If you're not in a small group right now, I invite you to join, join one. Um, Allie had hers last night. I'm in a couple of small groups and there are opportunities right now to join a small group or even better yet, we invite you to start a small group, pick what it is that you want to go over. But here's the key thing. We need to be building into one another. We need to be with people with whom we are reinforcing life in Christ, the new abnormal. We need to be reinforcing, teaching, helping, caring, sharing, being with one another in kindness. We might see differently abnormal wealth, that we might value things differently, and abnormal kindness, that we might bear with one another with patience and the unity of the Spirit. That's life in Christ. And one last thing, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments. Uh, I like you better in church, or I like you better when you're outside, or I like it better when you're going to interesting places, or I miss that, or all the rest of the thing. Here's the main thing, above and beyond all that, we are always the church, you know, wherever we are, whether, wherever we go. And through faith, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And because of your faith, the Holy Spirit is present in you right now, wherever it is that you're standing, wherever it is that you are sitting right now, that is church. And your home is a temple and you are in the presence of God right now. So let's practice worship in the home. Let's make our homes a temple. Because the church is not closed. The church has just been deployed. And you're in it right now. So let's be the church. Amen. Good morning. So this morning we're talking about abnormal kindness and I said it the first week and you know I think it's worth repeating that the difference between normal and abnormal is really just what you're used to. It's it's the difference of what's expected or what people are anticipating. Back when I was at Iowa State, um, we were all at the campus ministry and we were getting ready for an Oscars party. So um, we all had like our predictions of the winner sorted out. Like one kid had even made this like Oscars bingo game to play along with like the award ceremony. And we were all about to get changed into our red carpet outfits. Uh, one, one of my friends, we'll, we'll call him Mike, um, he said that he hadn't had dinner yet, so he was going to go and get dinner and he was going to come back. And, you know, being a college ministry building, we always had food. So I told him, I was like, we have plenty of food in the kitchen. Like, you can just eat here. Um, and then, you know, we went downstairs and he made himself a sandwich and he grabbed some chips. And then he looked at me and he said, oh, um, I'm so sorry, I don't, I don't have any cash. And for a moment, I was really confused um, until I realized that what he was doing is he was apologizing because he couldn't pay for the food. And I said, no, 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 it, it's, it's free. You don't have to pay for anything. And then it was his turn to look confused. And then he, ca he asked, you know, kind of suspiciously, he said, so you just give people food, like for free? as if we were, you know, writing out free tuition checks or something. It might have as well have been that ridiculous. Um, but I said, yeah, <laughs> we, we do. If, if people are hungry, then we give them food. That's one of the reasons why we're here. See, sometimes abnormal kindness looks like abnormal generosity. And sometimes that's not what people are used to. Sometimes, Abnormal kindness means showing people kindness when others would completely understand if you didn't. Have you ever witnessed that? Or, or maybe you've actually been the one who did it, where you did something kind for someone and someone just, you know, someone else's comment was, man, if you were, if I were you, I, I wouldn't have done that. In our scripture today, 
Paul is writing to the Ephesians, the people who live in Ephesus. And you have to remember that these books like Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, these are all letters that Paul was writing to a specific group of people about a specific problem. These weren't letters written in hopes that someday it, in the far future, someone might collect them and put them in a book. These weren't advice columns written to the masses or a blog post put out on the internet for anyone whose eyes might happen to fall upon it. Paul was writing to communities that he had visited these were people he liked. These were the people who would one day be identified as Christians that he believed in, whose faith that he had a personal stake in. And the problem that he's writing them about might sound a bit familiar um, because the people in Ephesus were becoming divided. Where Christ had called them to be unified. They were beginning to divide themselves. They were taking sides on issues and instead of learning to live in community anyway, they found it easier to divide themselves. Sound familiar? It begs the question, what can we learn about being kind, even abnormally kind during this specific climate? What can we learn about kindness from Paul's letter to the Ephesians? Well, Paul lays it out pretty clearly. Actually, you know, he says things like, I beg you, I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience and bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. But that's not all, he, sa he says more, he says, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, to whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament in which it is equipped as each part is working properly promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love he also says so then putting away falsehood let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors for we are members of one another and then lastly he says Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and raging and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. We can do this. Some of us already are. Some of us. Some of us may have been swept up in the chaos of everything happening, but that's okay. That's okay. That happens. That is being a human being, but it's time to come back now. It's time to come back. Consider this your invitation to return to the unified understanding of being one body in Christ. Are we all going to be the same? Are we all going to believe all the same things about every single thing? Nope, we're not. Remember that the different parts of the body are all different, that the hand and the liver look nothing alike, operate nothing alike and both serve really different purposes but they still obey the process that's communicated by the same brain and that's where the unity needs to happen we may all look different serve different functions have different opinions and experiences within the world but if this body is going to survive and even thrive, we need to be working off all the signals from a same brain, the same head, which is Christ. 
the body is an intricate balance of so many pieces and so many systems, but every single piece plays a part. Except the appendix. We don't know what part that plays. Okay, nobody is the appendix in this metaphor. Ignore the appendix. But back to my point, I think that abnormal kindness means seeing the person in front of you as a beloved member of the body of Christ, being tender-hearted and forgiving, knowing full well that you may never fully understand where they're coming from, their opinions or their experiences, but that their role in the body is every part as important as yours. And more than that, it's important to God. Christ's body needs their part in order to function. There's this comic strip, it's been around for a few years, and um, you've probably seen it, it's made its way around Facebook, I don't know, a couple times a year, every year, but there's this, um, it's of this man and he's sitting at his computer uh, at night, and um, his wife is in the doorway, uh, we think maybe to like, to the bedroom or something. And you know, she's saying like, hey, are you, are you coming to bed? Are you coming to bed soon? And he says, I can't, somebody's wrong on the internet. Next time this happens to you, and it will happen, remember that the person that's wrong on the internet is a vital piece of the body of Christ. And we should always err on the side of being abnormally kind. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, thank you for putting people in our lives that reflect all of the parts of the body of Christ. Help us each day to see with kindness first, to see the importance of their piece of the body, to understand that we all need each other in order for this body to be healthy, to move forward, to succeed in your mission in the world. Help us to be kind. Help us to be abnormally kind. Help us to show the kindness that reflects the love that you have put in our hearts. In your holy and awesome name we pray. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are going to continue with communion now, and I encourage you, if you've not done so, to gather together uh, some bread and some wine or grape juice and have that ready as we receive communion. And if you do have children with you, anyone who is not prepared for communion, we invite you to give them a blessing during the communion service, simply in the way of saying uh, the sign of the cross in their forehead, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you as a way of helping them understand God's love for them and the gift of God's grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When he had given thanks, he took the cup and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
I invite you to join me in speaking the prayer uh, that Jesus taught. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in receiving the bread and the wine, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that it might strengthen us in love toward you, toward one another, and toward your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In a moment, we are going to receive the offering. We encourage you to participate as you feel led to do so. Perhaps you're giving automatically online already. If you would like to use the text giving, the number is on the screen on both YouTube and on Facebook and or in the dialogue box. And also you can always mail your offering into the church if you wish to do so. Let us pray. Lord, we pray at this time that uh, we would give thanks for the abundant blessings that you have given us with a heart of gratitude. We pray that you would receive from us what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will receive the offering at this time, and I want to close our time here uh, for the sacrament with the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen.